Considering this is an introduction to MATLAB course, I think it's safe to assume I went a little overboard with this final project. Just a little bit. I'll get into why I went overboard later, but let me show you how much work I put into this project. What you're looking at is my entire MATLAB program in one file. It's over 1100 lines of code, 31 user-defined functions, and over 100 hours of work. But what exactly does my program do? In short, my program can calculate the trajectory of any object relative to Earth's surface. This includes, but not limited to, trajectories of falling objects, re-entry trajectories, orbits, and rockets. Furthermore, all objects can interact with a dynamic atmosphere with a changing density, pressure, and temperature as a function of height. You can even get this data from real life using NOAA's website. When you get the data from NOAA, it even picks up the wind data, so the wind could interact with the objects as it flies through the air. So with all that out of the way, let me show you my program in action. When you first click the Run button, the program greets you with an animation, and there are a lot of settings to be changed, but they can be grouped into four main categories. In the object parameters, the object characteristics can be changed, such as the mass, volume, cross-sectional area, and drag coefficient. There are also a drop-down menu of the different objects that can be selected, and options for a thrust curve and dynamic drag coefficient. In the environmental parameters, the density, wind characteristics, and temperature can be changed, as well as what type of atmosphere, either a static, standard, or location-based. There are also options for a rotating Earth and gravitational acceleration. In the next box, you can change the starting conditions, such as latitude, longitude, and height, as well as the starting direction, angle, and velocity. And finally, the simulation settings can be used to set up how the simulation will run. However, the default settings are fine. Finally, the last thing to do is to launch it. And when we do, another window will pop up. This window simply shows information about the flight in these six graphs. It shows atmospheric data on the right and text-based data at the bottom left. There are options that can change for the 3D simulation, but the default options are fine. Now, it's one thing to look at the graphs. However, it's a completely other thing to actually watch it fly through the air. What you just saw was a 3D simulation of the projectile launched at 720 kilometers and 5,000 meters per second. In this particular case, it was suborbital, but with a few modifications, you can simulate ballistic trajectories, re-entry trajectories, orbits, and rockets. I hope this video has shown you what's possible with MATLAB, but there's still one more thing left to talk about, and that is why. Why did I spend so much time and effort into a program when I didn't have to? The reason is because I wanted to see if I could make something I was really proud of and see what I'm capable of. But more importantly, I actually really loved doing this project. And doing it made me want to become an aerospace engineer just that much more. Mm -hmm.